Now, I would like to show you another method of dividing polynomials. So if you are not on friendly terms with the long division method, maybe this one will be the preferred method for you. This method is going to use the box method of multiplying as a background. So to explain it, I will first rely on the example I offered you in another video and use that as the basis of explaining how this works. Recall that I showed you this example in one of the previous videos. So we divided x squared plus 10x plus 21 by x plus 3, and the result ended up being x plus 7. I'm going to use this example to demonstrate how to divide polynomials using the box method. To begin, I would like to first multiply the x plus 7 with x plus 3 using the box method and demonstrate that you will get x squared plus 10x plus 21. I already did it in another video, but I want to have it right here as um, something to point, uh, point to, okay? Here is the result. x plus 7 multiplied back with x plus 3 gives me x squared, then a combination of 7x and 3x gives me 10x, and then there is a constant of 21, which is exactly what I expected. It is this dividend right here. I'm going to use the same idea to do the division from scratch. So let's pretend that I have this problem, x squared plus 10x plus 21, and I would like to divide this by x plus 3, and I don't know what the result is. Whatever that result is, I do know the following, that when I create a box, it will have two rows to be responsible for x and 3, and I don't know yet how many columns it's going to have because I don't know what my expression as my quotient will be. But whatever that expression is, whatever I need to put right here, the resulting um, expressions inside of the box should be equivalent to my dividend of x squared plus 10x plus 21 in some shape or form. So to reconstruct this unknown quotient, I'm going to start by fitting inside of the box my dividend of x squared plus 10x plus 21. You always have to start with the highest degree term. So I'm going to put inside my x squared. Here it goes. x squared goes inside. Now I have ability, I'm going to erase, hold on a second, I'm going to erase these question marks because that's where the thing's going to be um, put when I'm going to work through this process. Oops, sorry, here it is. Um, so now that I fit inside the x squared, I have a chance to answer a question. x times how much, what do I need to put right here, will give me x squared. Well, obviously, it got to be x because x times x is x squared. Now, knowing that my first column is um, is having x at the top, I can fill in my next cell down in the second row because x meets with 3 to give me 3x. All right, so far I have x squared and 3x in there. Notice I do need x squared. Here it is. I have it in there. So I took care of this term. I can cross it out. Now I need 10x to be inside of my box, but I have only 3x. How much do I need to throw in there to make the total of 10x? Well, obviously, I am lacking another 7x, because if I have that, I would get a total of 10x, and therefore I will take care of that term now. It's already fit inside of my box. All right, let's continue. It seems that now I can answer the question uh, right here and tell what this missing element is x times how much could give me a 7x? Well, that must be 7. So here it is. And now I can fill in my second cell in the second row um, and um, say that 7 times 3 is 21. So here it is. Now I compare what I see inside of my box to what I see in my dividend. Do I have x squared? Yes, I do. Do I have 10x? Yes, I do. Do I have 21? Yes, I do. I fit my entire expression inside of the box, and in the process, I revealed that the missing factor is x plus 7. That must be my result. There's no other way to answer this question.
So the answer is x plus 7. Where does it come from? From here.